out and I work in threes because the Lord works in threes. That's a way of three and three simple for me. But I got three essential things that the Lord laid out for me. And the first one is water. But there's just three essential things that we need spiritually to revive us spiritually. And we're going to uh, be in the book of John. And I'll give you a second to turn there. John chapter 4. And my three topics, I love, I was telling the men in the back, they're praying for me, I love how the Lord lays it out for me because I'm not smart enough and I don't have the wisdom that God has yet. And I was like, Lord, which way do I need to lay it out? And then when I got to study in the scripture, he had it laid out two, four, and eight. I said, I think I know which way you want me to go. I won't have to flip around. I can just go straight through, Lord. And then I realized something else. The way the Lord lays it out, it's essential for us to have each and every one in that order. John chapter 4, 13. It said, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I give him shall be in him a well, a, a, be a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Jesus sent the disciples in this text right here. Jesus had sent the disciples to go get some meat and some essential items. He stopped by a well that was called Jacob's well. He stopped and talked to a Samaritan woman. And he started conversating with this woman. And he was talking to her about the water in the well. And he said, but if you drink of this water that I'm talking about. And I've read that many times. And I say, what, what, what water? What water? Where's the water? What's it coming See, what Jesus did was he sent them disciples off. He could have very well went with them disciples himself to town. Or he could have had a couple stay back with him. But he didn't. Because the lady at the well needed a personal, intimate time with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That was where her water came from. She sat down and she had a talk with him. Not only did she have a talk with him, he explained to her that she, he knew her. She didn't have to tell him. See, God wants us to come to him and confide in him. But sometimes I can just say, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, help me, Lord, because God knows. The Lord knows. The Lord knows what that lady needed. The Lord knew who that lady was. Well, we think Jesus is going to come and talk to the saints. Well, no. When he got to telling this lady who she was, he knew right who this lady was. This lady had already been married five times and was living with a man that she wasn't married with then. But that didn't stop her. That didn't stop, that didn't stop Jesus from talking to her. And that didn't stop her from having an intimate relationship and an intimate time with the Lord. Now where I got convicted is I'm going to take another sip of this water and I don't have to be told to take another sip of this water. Sometimes I have to push myself in the winter to drink eight, eight, glass, eight ounce glasses of water a day. Well, I'm better at math than I am reading. That's 64 ounces. There's 60 minutes in an hour. I'm not going to ask you if you do, but I ask myself, do I stop and talk to my Lord and Savior eight times a day? Thanking him, asking him for guidance, for understanding, for patience to get through this crazy world that I live in. See, the world tells me I need to stop eight times a day and drink eight ounces. But the world don't ever stop and tell me I need to stop eight times a day and talk to the Lord. And sometimes I don't. And you know what happens? I realize at the end of the day, I'm spiritually dehydrated. I'm thirsting to death spiritually and don't know why. It's because I ain't drank none of my water. So you got to have water. And if I don't move on, I got three. And if I don't move on, we won't get all three. So I can go about 24, 36 hours without water. Got to have this water. Need the water. Jesus said that the water, I'm going to point out one more thing. I got to move on. But Jesus pointed out one more thing. That it was a spring. 
that it was a well that was inside of you once you had that relationship. Once you connect with Jesus, once you say, yeah, Jesus, I want you to be a part of my life. I want you to live inside of me. See, he's going to put that well. Because see, that lady, she was worried about old tradition. And I'm, I'm a traditional person. But she couldn't get past that physical well that was in the water. See, she couldn't get past that physical well. But he was talking about a well that's inside of our heart. Made me think when I was a young boy down there, we'd go down to the river on the weekends. We'd take jugs with us because there was a spring down there. Down right behind Wallinda, down there on the river, there was a spring that come up out the ground, and it fed natural, clear, crystal, clear, cold water 24-7. It never stopped flowing. That water would flow whether you was there to see it or not, whether you was there to catch it or not. On Sunday afternoons, we'd go down there to go fishing and go swimming in the water, and they'd send us, the, the old people would send us with jugs, old empty milk jugs. They'd say, get us some of that water, fill them jugs up, and bring them back to us. And when we got down there, the water was flowing. And we filled up them jugs, and when we leave, I'd look back, and the water would still be flowing. i say, it don't never stop. When we ask Jesus to come into our heart, whenever we have a personal relationship with Jesus, that water is always flowing in there. And Jesus is always providing the water. It's our responsibility to stop and gather and drink it. Because he's got it right there. It's living inside of each and every one of us. When we get that personal relationship it's living, each and every one of us has got it living inside of us. And all he's wanting us to do is drink it. If we drink it, then our spirits, get, we get fulfilled. Then I'm walking around and people can see not only my physical being, but they can see my spiritual being and see that I'm not thirsty. That the Lord's providing what I need to stay healthy. Well, the second essential thing that we need and what's important for us to have is the bread. The Lord said his word is the bread. This right here is the bread. You don't have to tell me three times a day it's time to eat. It gets about 12, 30, 1 o'clock. I know it's lunchtime. I know it's the second time of the day for me to eat. You don't have to remind me each and every day that I need to eat. But sometimes I'll go all day long. I'll get that daily bread, and that thing will keep popping up on my phone. I'll be so busy, and I'll click off, and I'll click off, and I'll click off. I'm going through this world. Everything's going wrong. Nobody's showing up on time on the jobs. Jobs aren't getting done. Materials aren't there. So many things can be going wrong in the world. But I don't stop and forget to eat. But just like in the Word right here, I'll go all day long. I can't figure out what's going wrong. But spiritually, I'm starving to death. I done ate almost a half a loaf of bread physically. Three sandwiches. <laughs> I'm fine physically. Physically, I ain't hungry a bit. Spiritually, I'm starving to death. Because I ain't eating nothing. I ain't having my bread. Lord covers it all. There ain't nothing we can ask. There ain't nothing we can talk about. The Lord ain't going to cover. This is an instruction manual for Christian life. Just a couple chapters over in John chapter 6, verse 35, he addresses the bread. Six, John chapter 6, verse 35 says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Sometimes I'll be going through life, that daily bread will click on, and it's, a, it's an app that you put on your phone. It just sends you one little verse. And I tell people, sometimes you'll be starving to death. I don't know if anybody's ever been real hungry, you'll be starving to death. Somebody give you just one little cracker, just one little cracker, and once you eat it, and it cleanses your palate, once it goes down, it feels like it fixed a little bit of it. Now, it'd be good to have a whole meal. It'd be good to read a whole chapter. But trust me, friends, before you starve to death, just take your one cracker in sometimes. Because it's amazing to me how God works. He gives me confirmation. Sometimes I'll be struggling going through something. I'll click on, I'll read that daily bread, and I'll stop. I'll just look up. 
Now, I know millions and millions, maybe a billion people has got that daily bread message. But it's amazing how Jesus creates a personal relationship with me where I read that message and I feel like it directly speaks to my life and helps me. See, it gives me instruction. It gives me advice. It teaches me to be patient, to be faithful. A lot of times I get caught up on what's going on out there in the world. And if they say don't go here, they say don't go there, they say don't go eat here, you can't go there, you can't go there, I pretty much listen. Pretty much go through the world doing what the world tells us to do. And I guess because I spend so much time out there and I get so caught up out there that I forget sometimes that this physical being, this physical body, this first part, the part that y'all can see, this is temporary. But this spiritual part, the part that I'm feeding with this, and the part that I'm feeding with the water, and the bread that I'm getting, that part, it's going to live on. See, it's hard for my mortal mind to understand that. It's hard for me to grasp that and concept that. See, this is going to get gray. You know, my back is going to hump over. I'm going to get to a point where I don't need this earthly body no more. But I do believe and I trust and believe and I stand firm in this. And I believe that my spirit, what I'm creating inside, is going to live on. <coughs> so why do I keep on working on my physical being and I'm so concerned about my physical being yet I neglect my spiritual view. It's because I can't see it. I have to, I have, to have a, direct, a direct connection with the Lord. Well, the reason I can't see it sometimes is because the world's so dark. The world's a dark place. The world has a lot of world in it. The Bible tells me that the world is a dark place. But the Bible also tells me something else. It tells me that Jesus is the light. Mm -hmm. And that's the third essential thing we need in living our life. To revive us. You've got to have water. You've got to have bread. And you've got to have light. We don't realize how important the light is. I did a youth devotion one time. did a youth thing. And it was a night time. The windows was out. It was so dark. <laughs> And I slipped over and given a devotion. I slipped over and I cut all the lights off. Made it completely dark in the room. And I said, what if I told everybody they had to get up and just do everything you normally did in this dark room like this? Then I went and got one little small flashlight. And I took that one little small flashlight and I clicked it. And I turned it on. They could see it in. It wasn't bright because it was only one light. But you could see a path to walk and you could see where to go. What's happening in the world is so dark because there's no light. See, if I go out there in this dark world and I'm just one little small flashlight, it might not light up the whole place, but I'm lighting up a path that I can walk down. And there's going to be people that see that light because they're in darkness. I get up a few times, starting to have to get up in the middle of the night to go to the restroom, and I'll try not to, I'll say, I'm not going to cut on the lamp. I know where everything's at. I'm good to go. I can make it all the way to the bathroom until I flip on the light. But when you wake up and it's dark, a lot of times you don't know that they might have left a shoe somewhere, or they might have left something for you to trip over. And that's how the world is. When I go out into the world and I don't take the light, that's how it is. Jesus addressed the light. Like I say, he works good for me. He looks out for me. If you'll uh, go just two chapters over. Chapter 8 in John, verse 12. It says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light 
of lice. So the three essential things spiritually that I need every day, not just physically. Man, what would I do? What would I do if I woke up tomorrow? What would we do tomorrow if we woke up and the sun didn't rise in the east? It does it every day. Sun rises up and gives us daylight every day in the east. We can count. We can count on it. I was looking out the window last night. And I was watching, just thinking about the Lord, just thinking about life, and I was watching out, looking out the window, and I told my wife, I said, it's a blessing that I can see the moon out there. I said, I can look right out my bedroom window, and I can see the moon shining right there. And I can count on when that moon starts going down, I see it coming down like that right there, and I was having trouble sleeping, I see it going down like that. And I seen it right there, I knew it was going to be about time to look on the other side, on the east, and see the sun start coming up. See, I guarantee you that there's going to be physical light in the world tomorrow by the sun. But I thought that was special when the Lord put that in my mind last night. And I told him, he said, the special light is going to come by the sun. And that's where spiritually where the special light that we need to shine in this world is going to come from. From the Amen. sun. Because once I started learning this and I started, started studying this, I realized something. It may not be easy. But God's going to make it simple. Because where do I get the water from? A personal relationship with Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Where do I get the bread from? From the words. From my Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. And where do I get the light from? From Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Amen. So, hey. It may seem complex at times, but it's simple. Amen. It's Jesus. It's the water. It's the bread. It's the light. Amen. And if we got all of that, and we ate, hey, and if we're on a balanced spiritual diet, just like the world wants us to be on a balanced spiritual, physical diet, if I'm, if I'm, spiritually, if I'm spiritually taking in my eight glasses of water, if I'm spiritually eating bread three times a day. If I'm spiritually walking in the light, then I'm going to do what the Lord wants me to do, and as I'm doing that, other people's going to see it, and through my spirit, it's going to help other people's spirits be uplifted, and therefore, that's going to draw them closer to Christ, and that's what I'm here for. Then I'm being obedient to God, and obedience equals blessings. That's just a same way with physical. If I eat right, if I exercise, if I do the things I'm going to do, I'm going to see a physical reward. So if I drink right, if I eat right, if I live right, spiritually, I'm going to get a spiritual reward. So, like I said, I titled this first message, A Soul Survivor. <laughs> and what we need, what we need is a revival. We need to revive all. Because see, you might, not, you might not feel like you need reviving, but you're going to get out there into the world and there's somebody out there that's going to need reviving. See, everybody don't come to church. A lot of times we might be out there in the world beside somebody at the grocery store and they'd be around us just long enough that they see past our physical being and they, they feel or they sense a little bit of the spiritual being. <laughs> And if you're getting three, hey, if spiritually, if you're eating three times a day, and spiritually you get your eight glasses of water, when you get out there into the world, you're going to be spiritually fit. And people's going to notice that. And they're going to want to see, they're going to they want to inquire. How are you so spiritually fit? How are you always in a good mood? It's not because of worldly circumstances. It's because of godly promises. See, I can't live by the world. I promise you when I go out there, it's going to be bad news. But I can't live on that. See, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And I can do anything out there in the world that this Bible says I can do. The Lord said he's put that inside of me, a well, this float. And all I got to do is put my cup there and catch it. And I believe that I'm living on the overflow. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm blessed beyond blessed. I'm thankful for each and every one, one of y'all 
I'm thankful for this opportunity. I hope that each and every one of you can come back. 